when we started with McKee, we wanted to make sure we can give the same or even some aspects a better service to residents staying in these underserviced communities. And, and you'll see it when we take you through the infrastructure, how it's put together. We're doing it at a quality level and the only constraint is the ability to service the area, to get back off to the area. Peter alluded to it. If we've got back off from DFA into the area, we can get connectivity. Everything else is exactly the same quality. How we produce the internet service to the end consumer will be different. But we, the, the thing that we, we stand for is uncapped quality. And those are the two things that if we can't do that, we won't do this. Because then we can go into a Wi-Fi like the other providers do. And that's exactly how we differentiate what we're trying to do versus the other providers that we compete with in this space. Because we're not the only guys. You know, they are being serviced by typically mobile operators, some fixed wireless providers, etc. So, but we are standing for a quality service uncapped and at several price points and affordable. At the price point, and I made a mention to Duncan, when we initiated this concept, we started with a view that in those days, you were paid 150 Rand for a gig of data. And our philosophy was, if we can give a consumer a, for the same price, uncapped fiber for a month, then we'll succeed. And that's the philosophy we deployed in this approach and what we're trying to achieve here. So I'm going to get hand over to Lummi, we're going to take you through the actual technical solution, uh, so how we provide the service. And this is uh, what we do is all, we typically go to schools where we put our pops down and we pay the schools a rental on a monthly basis for the use of the space. And then as part of our schools program, everything, and they're usually they're on the same properties, they get a gig service for free. And it doesn't mean if the school is in a, Alexandra or in a leafy suburb, they all get the same quality service, which is a gig service, which is through our ISP uh, program that we've got around the schools program. Um, and on that, on that note, I'm going to hand over to you, Lamit, to talk through the technical side. Yeah, guys, thank you very much for joining us here today. I think it's a great pleasure yeah. having you here. Some of you guys have been here previously. I think, um, like the Gerald also alluded to, this is our pop. So, very important, our safety in our pop is very important. As you can see, we've also got backup. For the pop, our generator sits there, but there's also batteries inside. So we can ensure that that client is on 24 seven. What happens at the client side is a different story. If they've got electricity as and or a backup power on that side, they will determine if they're going to be live and or not. On our side here, we produce 24 seven. So Kwame is our regional network owner. Um, he ensures that our pops are up he ensures also that the network stays up. He manages our maintenance of the network as well. And like Devok said as well, our uptime is as important in other reach and or in Santon as well as in Key in um, Alex as well. We will take you down if we've done with our pop on this side. We will take you to an actual deployment. You will see the, um, the cables and the fiber running out. And at this stage, we're coming from a node from DFA and just at the back there's a pole standing there and we go underground and there you can see where we go with fiber in that connects to our pop so Kwame is going to take us in the pop and guys please ask the questions that you would like to know so what how does a pop it what does pop mean so pop basically means so it's a point of presence so to relate it very easy it's like a little small server room that you put down in an area where our backhaul comes in and from there it distributes into the fiberhoods as well as into the neighborhoods. From there we go into the distribution level and into the, from the poles into the homes as well. So I'm here with uh, Peter Ace, who is the chairman of CIVH, the holding company of Vumatel, to have a look at um, Vumatel's rollout of fiber, low-cost fiber in the Alexandra Township in Johannesburg. Peter, um, thanks for the tour today. Tell us what you're doing here. So firstly, <clears throat> we're trying to bring internet to everybody in South Africa eventually. Mm -hmm. But not just any internet. You need to have internet that's affordable, um, fast, and uncapped, which is the most important internet you need because then you can watch videos you can sit on uh, YouTube all day but if you have um, like in the old days just mobile data your bundle runs out during the month so our goal was to give you sub 100 rand a month maybe um, 20 megabits per second unlimited internet per month you can do it with Wi-Fi but if everybody around you starts streaming then your quality goes down so we set ourselves a goal 
let's put fibre right into the final person's dwelling. And I think that's what we're doing, and it's making a difference. And can you do this profitably? I mean, uh, in the old days, I remember Telcom saying that uh, rolling out fibre itself, even into leafy suburbs, is not affordable. Yet here's Vumatel in an impoverished uh, township rolling out fibre. How are you doing this and making money? So it's, um, it's all about scale in the end, and that's why we would like um, to invest more in it so that we can eventually connect everybody. Um, we've also used different technology. As you've seen, we've got aerial fiber. We uh, use cables to go into the dwellings, and we're also doing it with the local community. So we're empowering the local community. They help us roll out the equipment, the fiber, do the distribution. And I think all of that together makes it profitable in the end. And are you doing this anywhere else in South Africa, or is it only Alex at the stage? So we started in Sanson, the leafy suburbs. Mm -hmm. Then we had a different model, which we called Wuma Reach, and we did the Soweto's, Fosleras, Mitchell's Plain. But then we said, why don't we do it right down to the bottom of the pyramid? And we picked Alex as an example. So we're trialing it here. We haven't commercially launched it. And we're learning. We've done it for almost 10 months now. And I think we've got the model cracked now, and we can now pull the trigger and do it nationwide. So this is going to go commercial. Uh, which which areas do you think you'll target first? So um, Cape Town, Kailicha would be a good example. Stellenbosch, where I live, Kaimandi, um, any suburb where there's never been affordable broadband in South Africa, we will tackle them. So Peter, how how do people in Alex use the internet differently to say someone in Santon? This is what's so amazing. When we first got in here, we said we will have shared internet. But as we've now progressed with the development of the product, people want their own internet. They want their own fiber in the house. And as you go into the houses, you'll see that they talk about their children using YouTube, their children's marks at school have improved. You find them having their own smart TVs, laptops. So they use it like the same as people in Santon. And that's what we wanted to do. These the people living in Alex should be treated no differently um, as far as the internet is to a person that lives in Santon. I have to ask you, what does this mean for the telecommunications industry in South Africa? Because it would strike me that if you're successful here, this is going to be a big competitor to the mobile industry. Of course, you're a former CEO of Vodacom. Um, what, what, what will the impact be on mobile operators of a successful deployment of uncapped fiber into townships across South Africa? So I don't see them as competing, they are working together. So you always, you still have your mobile phone and when you go around, when you go to, the, to work, you need data connectivity as well. But this is when you're at home. I think fiber is the only way that you can really give unlimited internet because spectrum will always be limited. God only created so much spectrum, but fiber we can roll out to anywhere in the country. And on the fiber, you can just add more and more to it. So eventually, each house in Alex could have a gigabit per second internet uncapped. That would be amazing. Fantastic, Peter. All the best with this initiative. Thank you, Duncan. So there's our distribution and into our identifiable um, sl pink slack bins. There's the identification on the pole as well. So if a client would like to order, he will look up to his closest pole and he will take that number down and that's the way that he's going to order um, on our system as well. Okay, so, and each one of these small lines is a drop into a home and, a, and it equals a connection. So we can do like a set 32 of those lines basically out of one pole. So I'm here with Dietloff Maria, who is Chief Executive of Vumatel. Uh, Dietloff, tell us a bit about what you're doing in Alexandra Township. Oh, thanks, Duncan. Yeah, we here today. I mean, uh, listen, we're trying our best <laughs> to roll out fiber into, into Alex. I think, I think, you know, we started years ago with, with core in the leafy suburbs and Parkhurst and those places. And then we launched prepaid, I think first in the world as a, as a fiber company. Yeah. And quite successful, actually very successful in, in basically the Soweto's. We started in Mitchell's. So, so I think we're covering mo more than a million homes now in, in, in specific the beach market. And now we're looking at, at, at the key market. And key for us means, you know, it's the, it's the key to have access. You know, so it's key to have access to the internet. And I think it's different to just a, 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 a fiber connection in a home. Yeah, it's access to, to, to internet, you know. And I think, I think the, big, the big play was here to say, listen, you know, obviously closing the digital divide in South Africa, but it's bigger than that. It's, it's really creating connectivity in, let's say, called previously underserved areas, 
to, to make sure we can get the people connected. Firstly, for them to connect, to connect, and then compete with the rest of the world. So it's so it's closing the digital divide between South Africa and the rest of the world. I think, as you know, things are going so fast that uh, by by 2030 it's going to be a different world, and, and connectivity is super critical. So I would say my, my biggest competitor at this point is is time. You know, we have to get the houses houses connected, and, and and that's what we're trying here. And you know, and and the second thing is you have to do a quality connection. It's not a Wi-Fi, highly contended service. It has to be a type of service that, that's uncapped and it's at a speed where people can use it. You know, so it has to be reliable because if you look at disposable income, I mean, that's scarce here, you know. So, uh, so, 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 so your service here must actually be better than basically in the Santons of the world, you know. That's how we see it. And can you deploy infrastructure like this in an area like Alexandra and do it profitably? Listen, we can, you know, so there's two elements to it, really good question, <laughs> but there's two elements to it, and I think that's why we lost here, you know, because that was the trick, you have to look at the technology, you have to look at the capex of deployment, and then the biggest issue is you have to service the customer, and, and that's what people people sometimes forget a little bit, you know, I think, I think the trick will be to service the customer, you know, and, and we've, we've created this DSP model, you know, where we created the, the little bit of economies, we're starting these little businesses within the, in the, in this economy or in this area and, and drive business from within, you know, it's not just taking businesses from without and, and plug and playing it into, into, into these areas, it's, it's doing the, it the other way around, you know, so, so for me the biggest challenge here, and that's why it took a little bit longer than, than the reach, was to get the service levels right, to get your distribution models right, to make sure that your first line support and your customer experience is, is we can manage, you know, and that's that's the challenge. And and there I also say, you know, we're doing it on, on an ISP model, you know, still open access, it's one of our core pillars, we're building a DSP service model under it. So the role of the ISP will change a little bit because of profitability. We have to get the profitability right for this thing to scale. Uh, and I think that's the challenge. So how much longer have you got uh, for the, with this pilot here in Alex and when do you pull the trigger on a commercial deployment? Listen, you know, we, we do POCs and uh, then roll out. So I think, I think it's done in Alex. Huh? So, so I think it's working. I've still got one or two challenges on the exactly the distribution, the activity rates, uh, it's how, how we do the, how do, do we do the billing. I think there's nice value adds we can plug and play into this thing that's totally different to other markets, you know, but um, so, so effectively, it's a POC, but it's live. Huh? It's, it's, we've got customers on this, you know, we've got... Paying customers. Paying customers, yeah, so, so it's working. And weird enough, what we're also seeing is, you know, we've created this um, DSP model, you know, which is a key area, but a lot of people actually want reach. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're happy with the 399, you know, services uncapped that we give. And so it's a bit of a hybrid model, you know, but to scale this thing in time, I think the issue will be service. And so commercial launch when? Commercial launch, listen... Uh, Still this financial year, you know, so, so definitely this financial year and uh, I'll invite you guys for the launch as well. You know, that'll be nice. Dietloff, thank you. Thank you so much. So you happy with the service? Yeah. 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 Yes. So what do you watch? Do you, do you, do you, what do you do with the service? Uh, we watch Netflix or Max. Yeah. And also we do have uh, what do we call it? What? Is it so <laughs> Yeah, also DS. Yes, and, and, yeah. and then you work with your computer? Yeah, with the laptop. Yeah, it's going to the laptop. Yeah. Yes, my laptop is on, my phone's on. Uh, yeah, you know, and how many gigs yes. a month do you use? <laughs> Roughly. What's your usage? Uh, you know? This one is unlimited, so yeah. you don't know how to count. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how to count.